Hello there, folks. This is Brian with The North End and of Tottenham on Tour. On this video, I will be responding to Adam Clark's five things we learned about Tottenham versus Wolves. So after that defeat to Wolves, a lot of Tottenham fans started asking themselves, why did we get ourselves into this position yet again? How did we get here? And most importantly, what can we take for, away from these two games and what can we learn if the team still have the ability to do that, of course? Let's go. All right, number one. Adam's first point was player improvement. Now, it's hard to deny that the players did improve since Antonio Conte has come in. Uh, arguably improved considerably in some cases. Uh, the likes of Harry Winks in the first couple of games, uh, Matt Doherty in moments, but not so much. Davidson Sanchez's statistics went through the roof completely, um, and Ben Davies improved considerably as well. All of those players playing when we had a very specific couple of other players playing like not even like Oliver Skip and Eric Dyer our defense without Eric Dyer in it unfortunately is is crap it, it, it is without leadership even with Romero in there it's without leadership we struggle to have somebody to dictate what's going on Davidson Sanchez can't speak very well uh, in regards to being a leader Romero is fantastic but arguably does his own thing and isn't going to control what other players do. And, and Davies is just, he's a mouse. He's quiet. He just does his job and arguably does it reasonably well, but never great, but never poor. When you're missing Dyer and you're missing Skip in front of Dyer, you're missing a spine of a team that everybody around them feels more comfortable and makes better decisions. I think much of what we've seen in the last two games, specifically in that Wolves game, when there isn't a leader, dictating what's going on with the other players around them. You have moments, like we saw in that game, four or five players standing and watching the ball and not doing anything about what was happening around them. Um, and you need somebody shouting. Now, Hugo Lloris should be doing that, but as a keeper in a scenario where there's a cross coming in, he's not going to be yelling at players and getting them into position. It's just he doesn't, he doesn't have the ability to do that as a keeper. He's got to focus. So I think it's understandable that they're struggling. So I get, I get Adam's point here. Um, the player improvement is, is seemingly, you know, uh, barely there. It started and now it's ending. Um, but I think that if you look at the correlation between when we've lost Dyer and skip, that it makes sense that those other players are in those positions, um, who aren't capable of leadership in that, in that same role in that same way, um, have struggled. Number two, defensive problems. The second point I want to get onto is something that we have been complaining about and rightfully so for weeks on end now, and that's our absolutely shambolic defense. Uh, this goes to exactly what I just said again. It's without Dyer um, and with Romero coming back and playing in that Dyer position in that center of our, of our three, it just doesn't feel right. Eric Dyer, as much as he may not be the best footballer in the world, he's a leader and he speaks very well and everybody around him listens to him and he dictates what happens with that back three. We need him back desperately, especially with upcoming game against Man City. Hopefully he's fit enough. If we play that three that we had in this game against Wolves, against City, we're going to get absolutely destroyed. So hopefully he'll be back and Skip will be back and that, that spine will help us get back to the statistics which are bear out exactly what we're talking about here. When you're missing those two key, key players in your in your midfield and in your center of your defense, you're going to miss leadership. You're going to miss what you were good at for the period of time that we did start to look like we were much better. Now, this is a, a, a hard one for me to, to argue in any capacity, but I will try. Uh, nonetheless, a right wing back is point number three. Number three, uh, which we've knew uh, in January and prior to that, in when, when, we, when we brought in uh, Royale, what issues we had with Matt Doherty not being good enough and then Royal coming in and arguably isn't good enough either. The system that we're playing requires a very specific type of player. In those two players, we don't have what's good enough. Now, we're supposed to have that in Doherty in that he is and was against Wolves in particular. That's the position he thrived in. He, you know, he, he was one of the best in that position in the league a few seasons back under, uh, or sorry, when playing at Wolves. For whatever reason, uh, he and, and maybe it's a system thing, maybe it's multiple different coaches, maybe it's just confidence. There's a lot of different reasons why he's not good enough. Hard to argue with that. Should we be expecting more knowing we didn't get anybody in? That's my only refutation of this point number three. What does everybody think should happen? 
you know, we knew we didn't get the player that we needed. It was supposed to be a Dom Adama Traore, Traore. Hard to say whether that would have done anything. Likely not. Might have been even worse. Who knows if you can even defend. So we've got two defenders that aren't good enough in that right wing back position. It has to be addressed. Didn't get it done in January. We all know we wanted it to. Circumstances didn't uh, didn't didn't come to fruition the way we'd hoped that would we would have gotten a player in that position that would have been able to play it well and uh where we are where we are so the right back is going to be where we get targeted against hard to argue adam's point there but i do think uh patience is going to have to be key here and i think that's across the board when uh when it comes to our current situation as, as spurs fans top number four top four and any hope that we have going for it is a pipe dream i'm sorry but that's just the sad reality of it the truth hurts and it this hurts a lot this truth does hurt a lot a top four <laughs> uh is it possible well you know statistically speaking it is yes and i get adam's point here adam is suggesting that after what we've seen the last two games arguably three it's three and three losses in a row with city coming at the weekend we're probably in a very difficult situation that we may we may be able to get top four I, it's hard for me to disagree with that because, of course, coming off three losses in a row and a potential fourth and dropping a number of points, what do you, what do you, what's to argue there? Well, I would suggest this. Statistically speaking, from a numbers perspective, there's a lot of football to be played. Every one of the teams around us, despite what happened this past weekend, has been dropping points, uh, have not won the games they're supposed to win, have struggled uh, like Spurs are struggling. It has been pretty brutal for that top four spot to understand who may or may not come in and out of it i i will suggest now that that is likely going to change for the rest of the season like over over and over again with different teams coming in and out of that that fourth spot um and i've said this before and i'll say it again one team just needs to go on a run now spurs have gone on a, on a negative run and, and still are in touching distance statistically we go on a run the other direction you know we get we get ourselves back on track at post man city i'm not going to suggest that that's going to be a uh a scenario where we'll be we'll, where we'll be able to get things back on track but post man city if we can go on a run of four or five games of, of wins we can get by ourselves back into that conversation we'll be having it again i think it's too soon to suggest that it top four is out completely i get what adam's saying i understand why he's saying that but i don't think it's i don't think it's appropriate to to count us out yet um but i but i understand the position and finally number five and i said this earlier and i'll say it again it's patience with conte we have to give this guy time. He said it himself in mo in multiple interviews. I need the fans to have patience. I want the fans to have patience. This is a, th a key thing that needs to happen for fans. To we need to be patient. I reacted very poorly to the loss against Wolves uh, from a from my own personal perspective. I struggled with it massively. I did not. I was not happy. And then I watched what he said afterwards, and I gave myself a bit of time, and I calmed down. And I was like, look, this manager's come in. We've been a mess for a long time. He's dealing with a massive, massive mess of a club that um, – Punched above its weight for a period of time under Pochettino and then has gone through multiple managers who none of them really worked. You know, obviously the Jose Mourinho fiasco that that, that that took place was an absolute mess. We've got Antonio Conte and arguably one of the best managers in the world at the moment, top three, who has asking us to have patience and support the team. We have to give him that as fans. I get it. Uh, it's, it's hard to have any patience. Uh, I understand that completely. Um, but we have to have it. Now, Adam did mention something in his five, and this is where we agree, and it's a good spot to end this video, is this is the formation. This is the thing that I think Antonio Conte, for for whatever reason, and I don't, and maybe it's maybe it's personnel, maybe he in the, arguably, not even arguably, he knows more than we know about what personnel he has and the qualities that they have and whether they're going to fit into the system. But playing two in midfield against uh any team in the Premier League. Uh, is 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 a mistake in my opinion. And I think Antonio Conte has to has to find a way to get three in the midfield and play a three five two like he was doing at Inter, where it worked really well. And of course, you need the players to do that. So Skip needs to be fit. So if we can get Skip fit and we can play three in the middle, maybe against City, it might even get a, give us an opportunity to get a, get a, a point out of it. Um, but we need to play with three in the midfield because we're getting overrun, especially when our wing backs particularly on the one side, don't really know how to play defensively and forward at the same time. And we're leaving ourselves exposed. You need that extra midfielder in there who can come in and, 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 and help with a wing back if the wing back gets caught up the, up the pitch. So we need this to happen. This is a, this is a key, key thing. And I would hope to see Antonio make that decision. So I think ads and I agree on that. 
So um, I hope you guys like this video. That's five things we we learned response to Adam Clark. I don't think it's all doom and gloom. I agree with much of what he said, but I just wanted to sort of maybe uh, talk about a bit of the nuance there. Um, thank you for watching this. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe to, to the North End and hop on over to Tottenham on Tour as well um, for more content over there. And we're doing this uh, sort of combination thing. Uh, hopefully we're going to be doing more of this uh, for, for a lot of the videos. Um, and uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you soon. Cheers. This is the North End